Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow up 291. We get the Nasdaq up 89. S&P's up 29. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the first hour. Don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. The way you can get this newsletter is to come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to the featured content. You're going to see our Hit Mastering Probability, you hit subscribe, you can get it for a month for $149, you can get it for six months for $695, that's a savings of $199, you can get it for a year for $1,195, that is a savings of $593, and of course, our man Steve Rhodes is the market timer of the year, according to Time is Digest in 2018, it's a beautiful thing. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, you know, just trying to take in this beautiful weather oh. that we have <laughs> makes it tough to sit indoors and watch the screens. I'll tell you, man, it, it, it's, you know, March, well, it's April now, folks, but we've had a March that's incredible. It's just, yeah, yeah. no, and, you know, and it's, and, and as you know, I mean, both you and I were, we're very fortunate first to be down here. We're fortunate to be on the water, close to the water, where even during the, uh, you know, I've got friends that visit me all the time from the north and, and they're like, you know, doesn't it just get too unbearable down here in the summertime? And I'm like, when you're by the water, you get that. It exactly. just cools. Yeah. It cools down. You know, it, it, it's actually warmer, I think. It's up. It's much warmer in the north and the Midwest than it is, you know, being in Florida. So, And then we get the benefit of, like, March and April. So, uh, you know, it's we're, a beautiful we're, day. We're in, we're in the, the spot right now, folks. This is like the if – you, if you, anyone that comes down here right now, you will end up staying here. Absolutely. Stay <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're so we're like Bob Barker. Come on down. Totally, totally, <laughs> yeah. man. Totally. So let's take a look at a couple different things out okay. here. Um, the 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 screen that that we have up right now just happens to be the Dow, and so uh, you know trend lines. So the the nice thing, you and I, we we there's a, a number of technical words that we just kind of throw out there. They're just part of our normal jargon, so to speak. But for new listeners, uh, you know, that don't spend the type of time that we do, and they look to us to help them understand what the markets are doing. Uh, some tools. Let me just take a look at uh, some trend lines out here because everybody can draw a line. And so what's interesting about the trend line right now inside the Dow, so the folks can get a gauge as to, so price is up against a, a resistance level. So I'll, we'll take a little bit of time and spend some time looking at diagonal, horizontal trend lines. And, and all I did here, folks, was took the high out here from November 8th, and that was the high before the markets really went lower into the end of December. And then we made another high out here. This little shooting star was on the trading session of uh, February 25th. And all you do is just connect those two. You can connect the dots. You can see that what price has done here in the Dow has run right into that level. Now, it's a slight diagonal there. But here, I'll just go ahead and put the horizontal resistance swing point um, not much higher than where we're at. That's the November 8th high, and that's at 26,277. So what I would tell folks is if we see the Dow above 26,277, pretty darn good chance what we're going to see is the Dow get all the way back to its highs. Now, in overnight action, just to show folks about trend lines, um, if we take a look at it, and something that they can watch overnight is what happens to the Shanghai. You know, it's it as of recent, or as of the last uh, three months, it's been on fire. Now, what's kind of cool about the Shanghai out here, Tom, and to show folks how trend lines really work, if we go back to June in 2005, so this is a monthly time frame chart that we're using, you can see this rising trend line, in essence, where price found support back in 2018, in December 2018, January 2019, and price has really just taken off since there. Now, comparatively speaking, we take a look at where the Shanghai is in relationship to its highs or all-time highs, nowhere near what the Dow is doing, but just really the ability to let folks take a look at trend lines. And these are the diagonal trend lines. What's kind of cool is I can also put in, and so from here, how do we try to project where the Shanghai may be headed to? And an easy way to do that is to take a look at all this data. Because we're looking at a monthly chart out here, what I've just applied is, is the tool that takes a look at horizontal trading ranges. And this identifies um, levels of support or resistance, floors and ceilings. And so with regard to the Shanghai, uh, it closed at 3320. Um, 
where it appears to be headed to is the 3405 level. Uh, and what the, on a monthly basis, what the Shanghai has seen is 10 opens or closes on a monthly basis at that area. So that's the level where I see the Shanghai getting to next. We took a look at a level inside the Dow. That was a daily time frame chart that we were looking at. And so these are the horizontal trading range levels out here. So where do we take that? Where do we take that for our markets out here? Let's go take a look at um, let's go take a look at the Dow again. And as we take a look at the Dow priced in uh, priced in dollars out here, I have a weekly, a monthly, and a daily time frame set of horizontal trading ranges because you know not all months end on a Friday, not all weeks. Well, all weeks end on a Friday basically. Um, but here, what this does is we can take a look at the daily time frame horizontal trading ranges. What this shows us is that there was a key level. There have been 32 opens or closes within a small fraction of the level of 26,103. So that was a real key level um, for the Dow to jettison itself above uh, today. And uh, so this is suggesting that even if the, so if the Dow closes above that first trend line that we looked at, this tells me that we go back to its highs back to its highs would be the October 3rd level, but perhaps even higher than that, perhaps all the way up to this 27,401 area. And uh, if we take a look at now the daily, which we just looked at, and look at the weekly and the monthly, it has its horizontal trading ranges, and they give us price targets of 26,985 and 27,301. So I use these really as ranges, not necessarily right to the tick, out here, but it gives us the ranges. So watching the Dow over the next couple days is going to be really important. And to switch it from the Dow over to the S&P 500 so that folks can kind of take a look at things, what our charts are telling us right now with regard to its horizontal resistance and support levels is that the S&P 500, the daily time frame number is 2891. There have been 18 opens or closes up at that level. And the weekly gives us a price projection in the 2902 area and the monthly around 2935. If we take a look at the monthly chart here, this is pretty cool because these horizontal trading ranges were established years ago because I'm taking data, Tom, here in this case, just simply going back to 1997. And so these, these horizontal trading ranges were really formed between the price point, this is the S&P 500, between 1328 which had 19 opens or closes and 10.99, also 19 opens or closes. And it takes that distance and just applies it to each level to create these new floors and ceilings. How is it that from that area where it was generated, it was able to pick out that the ceiling inside the S&P was going to be 29.35, which in essence is where it really stopped back in October, in September, in October of 2018. At this stage here, the way things look, looks like we're going back to retest those highs out there. So there's your trading range boundary lines as well as some diagonal tools that everyone can use on their charts at home. It's a beautiful thing. And folks, the way you're going to get this great newsletter is you come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go, you see it right under featured content, mastering probability, hit that subscribe button. And of course, every trading day, you can listen to Steve right here, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Steve, have a great one, safe one. We look forward to show tomorrow. Thanks, Sam. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.